Once you see this and this, you will know that God really parted the Red Sea. You're not going to believe this, but professors from the University of Arizona have recently confirmed by using radiocarbon dating that the story of Moses splitting the Red Sea might not be far-fetched after all. But if that wasn't enough evidence for you, look what they found at the bottom of the Red Sea. Now, in case it hasn't clicked in your mind why this is such a massive discovery, let me refresh your memory. God spoke to Moses through the burning bush, and he told him to go to Egypt and tell that stubborn Pharaoh to let my people go. But Pharaoh would not listen. And so God had to send 10 curses to get Pharaoh to listen to him. Eventually, Pharaoh did obey the voice of the Lord. And he let the people of Israel go, but only for a period of time. The Bible says that Pharaoh again hardened his heart, he changed his mind, and he sent a fleet of what is believed to be 250,000 Egyptians with their horse-drawn chariots after the people of Israel who were on foot. You can imagine how scared the Israelites must have been as they found themselves cornered and in front of them was this big body of ocean. God never leaves his people floundering. He told Moses to stretch out his hand over the Red Sea and it would be parted. And that is exactly what happened. Miraculously, gallons and gallons of water began to gather into these big two walls on either side and there was a clear path for the people of Israel to cross safely to the other side. Now, let's just hit the brakes for a minute because I want to show you a 3D simulation of what the seabed, the topography looks like from Nueva Beach in Egypt all the way to Saudi Arabia where we're going to find Mount Sinai in a moment's time. Can you see how it almost looks like there's a land bridge beneath the water? This land bridge, this natural formation was found 33 meters beneath the water and the evidence would suggest that it's wide enough to fit two million Israelites as they made the journey to the other side. But what they found on this land bridge is going to blow your mind. You see, the Egyptians even had the audacity to follow the Israelites into the parted sea. And the Bible actually records this. It says that their chariot wheels started to get clogged up. Some translations say that their chariot wheels even came off. So it made it very hard for the Egyptians to drive the chariots, but that didn't stop them. They started to catch up to the Israelites. And you can imagine the Israelites, they're terrified now. They think we're going back to Pharaoh. We're going back to this harsh rulership. But God knew exactly what he was doing. He told Moses to raise his hands again over the sea and Moses obeyed. As soon as Moses did this, the ocean swept all of the Egyptians so not even one was left standing. So, take all of that into your mind and you tell me right now, if we scanned the seabed of the Red Sea, what would you expect to find? You would expect to find many, many chariot wheels, would you not? We'll take a look at this picture that was found on the land bridge and you tell me, what does this coral formation look like? It looks just like a chariot wheel. But get this, when scuba divers went down with metal detectors, they found circular patterns that were consistent to the exact shape that you would expect to find on a chariot wheel. Now come on, even if you're the biggest atheist on earth, you've got to admit to me, that's pretty strong evidence. Now, this is crucial. For many, many years, the popular tourist destination from Mount Sinai was in Sharm El Sheikh in Egypt. That's where everyone went, that's where everyone believed it was. But now, as we look at this evidence that I'm going to show you in this video, and as we listen to what the Saudi Arabians have said for many, many years, they claim that no, Mount Sinai is in our country, in Saudi Arabia. In fact, I want you to do something. Just listen to this American pilot describe what he was forbidden to do in the 1940s when he was in Saudi Arabia. And we're talking about where the real Mount Sinai is located. I had no idea that someone as far back would have seen the mountain and had been told that the mountain was the holy mountain of Moses. In well, they forbid me to fly around it, and it was off limits. I'm gonna bring out a map. Yes. 
and this map is of the area that you were flying around then. Can you show me the area where that you were flying around? Yeah, they told me it was Mount Sinai, and it was the Mount of Moses. I think God let me fly around it, that's what I think. I think he let me, you and me both well. And did it, did it touch your heart to have that? It still does. Before we reach the mountain itself, let me show you some very convincing evidence that this could well be the real Mount Sinai. In Albad in Saudi Arabia, there is an archaeological site called Moses' Well. Islamic sources, which go as far back as 900 AD, claim that this is the well where Moses watered his flocks and met the daughters of Jethro. But what about this? In the Bible, we read about Moses and the Israelites finding this beautiful desert oasis called Elam. At Elam, there was many springs of water and 70 palm trees. So now, cast your eyes onto this collection of palm trees, which is found reasonably close to the supposed Mount Sinai. And what is it the locals for many years have called this area? They also have called it Elam. But here's some more compelling evidence for you. We know that Moses, after writing down God's laws in the Book of the Covenant, set up an altar for burnt sacrifices. Well, here is an ancient altar made of uncut stones, just like the Lord specified. And when it was dug up years earlier, do you know what they found? The remains of many animals. We also know that because the Israelites were disobedient, 3,000 people were struck down. And so some actually believe that these gravestones right here could be the gravestones of those who worshipped the golden calf. If you look here, you can see what appears to be mortars that are dotted all the way around Mount Sinai. And it's been speculated, could these be the mortars that were used to grind the manna every single day? And just here, inside the archaeological area, we see carvings of the rock of what is quite clearly calf idol worship. But not only has idol worship been recorded, there's also been found ancient Hebrew menorahs found on the rocks around Sinai, which again is more possible evidence that the Israelites were here, and this is in fact the real Mount Sinai. But here's what's kind of scary. These menorahs have since been erased away, and we don't know the reasons why people are trying to get rid of the evidence. But for me personally, this is what I'm most excited about. Josephus, the Jewish historian, said that the rock of Horeb was so big that it couldn't be moved. And this split rock right here is estimated to be between 40 and 60 feet high. And inside the rock, it's smooth with grooves that clearly show some kind of water erosion, which is kind of strange to find in the middle of the desert in Saudi Arabia. But most interesting of all, this rock is found at the foot of the Mount Sinai that we're about to look at in a moment's time. But wait a second, Joe. You haven't even told us what the Rock of Horeb is yet. Well, when the people of Israel were in the wilderness, they began to get very thirsty. And so they started to complain to Moses. Moses, you've led us out into this wilderness for us to die of thirst. And Moses took all of this to heart and he cried out, God, what do you want me to do with this people? This was the Lord's response. Behold, I will stand before you there on the rock in Horeb, and you shall strike the rock, and water will come out of it, that the people may drink. So Moses obeyed God and struck the rock, and out of it flowed abundant water, and the people drank and were satisfied. Now, Everyone listen to me, because when I saw this for the first time, I could not believe my eyes. You see, thousands of years ago in the wilderness, thousands of years ago when we look at the rock of Horeb, God was demonstrating a picture of the cross. How do I know that? Because the Apostle Paul says, that rock was Christ. You see, when Moses, an imperfect human being, struck the rock, 
It was a picture of when Christ would be struck by imperfect human beings. There on the cross, the Lord Jesus Christ was smitten, was beaten, was struck by sinners so that you and I can have the forgiveness of sins. There Christ's body was broken. He had nails through his hands and his feet. He had a crown of thorns smashed into his skull. His beard was plucked out. There the Lord Jesus Christ bled and died so that we could be forgiven. And just like that rock was split in two and water flowed out of it, abundant water. When the Lord Jesus Christ's body was broken, when he offered himself as a sacrifice, also out of his life flows abundant living water. And just like the water at Horeb was free, so this water is free. The waters, the rivers of forgiveness that flow out of Christ's life are totally free. And I'm asking you today, are you thirsty? If you are, come to the Lord Jesus Christ and drink of his water. Because I'll tell you something, Jesus Christ is the rock of our salvation. The Bible also calls Jesus the cornerstone. And what was the cornerstone? It was the rock that builders built everything around. It it was the basis, it was the foundation rock, and everything else depended on the cornerstone. And I want to ask you, are you building your life on the Lord Jesus Christ? Or are you building your life? on other things. I remember when I was a little boy learning about Moses in Sunday school and I used to read this story and I used to think it sounds a little bit harsh that Moses was not allowed to enter into the promised land. Why was that? Let me tell you why. In Numbers 20 Moses finds himself in a very similar situation. Again the people are complaining, again the people are thirsty, again they're saying we will die unless you give us something to drink Moses. So again Moses approaches the Lord and says says, what should I do with this people? So God says to Moses, I want you to stand in front of another rock, but this time I want you to speak to the rock, and when you speak, water will flow out of it. So Moses stood in front of the rock, but what did he do? He struck the rock, just like he did at Horeb. Now why was that a serious thing to do? I'll tell you why because you never strike the rock twice. You see, the Lord Jesus Christ only needed to be struck once. He only needed to be crucified once. Before there was many sacrifices, before there was many offerings that the people had to do as a way of atoning for their sins. But when Christ died on that cross, it was sufficient. It was a once for all act and never again did Christ have to be pinned to that cross because forgiveness can be found through that one act. What Jesus did was enough. And really, that is why God had to discipline Moses so harshly, because he did not want to send out a confusing message to all the myriads of people who would read the Bible years later. And there is one more reason why Moses wasn't allowed into the promised land. You see, Moses represents the law, and the law will not get you into the promised land. The law will not get you into heaven. No, you need a Joshua. What does the word Joshua mean in Hebrew? It means Yeshua. And what does Yeshua mean in Greek? Jesus. You need a saviour to lead you into the promised land. It is only Christ who can take the people to heaven. And that is why Joshua was the one who led the people into the promised land. And Moses was not allowed to enter. But let's just make something clear right now. Moses will be in heaven. In fact, we know that Moses is with Christ right now. Because on the Mount of Transfiguration, the Lord Jesus Christ turned up with Moses and Elijah. Okay, you've waited long enough. Here is what I believe is the real Mount Sinai. The Bible says, now Mount Sinai was completely in smoke because the Lord descended upon it in fire. Its smoke ascended like the smoke of a furnace and the whole mountain quaked greatly. And that, my friends, is why I believe this is the real Mount Sinai. You can see it's got blackened peaks as if it's been scorched by fire. And even geologists are really perplexed at why it's only black on the outside and on the inside it's completely normal like normal rock as if it's been melted. And something else rather incredible is this. You can notice a sort of pulpit where you can imagine that Moses would address the people and use this natural amphitheater. And if you want to know all about the Ten Commandments and what they mean for us today, you need to see this video right now. 